Hey everyone, this is Joel at Homino Wireless, and in this video, we are going to take a look at what it looks like to do a network design from start to finish in Homino. Now, I'm gonna use a few different types of environments. We'll look at a hospital, we'll look at a warehouse, and we'll look at an outdoor environment as well. And that should give you a pretty good idea of not only what Homina is capable of, if you're looking at evaluating this product to see if this is the right fit for you, but this should also be a good video for somebody that maybe is new to the product and just wants to get like a quick crash course on how to use it. So let's jump right in and, and take a look at, uh, at a project. So I'm gonna create a new project here and I'm just gonna call it hospital because that's, uh, that's the type of environment uh, that we're designing for. And we'll select that here from the drop down as well. And then we'll hit save. And then Hamin is gonna prompt us to either give it some notes, uh, like for example, you could put in project requirements or something like that here, maybe the types of clients that you need to support or just anything that you need to keep track of in the project you could put in here to keep with that project or we can give it a floor plan. And so let's do that now. I'm actually gonna go grab a PDF file here. By the way, we support PDFs, PNGs, JPEGs, uh, DXF and DWG CAD files. All the usual stuff is totally supported by Hamina. So we'll have that pull that, that file in first. And I'm actually gonna show you this particular floor plan in two stages. Uh, first, I'm gonna show you what it looks like if we have Hamina automatically draw the walls, and then I'll show you what it looks like to manually draw the walls, because in some cases, we can draw walls automatically. In some cases, then, uh, then we'll just draw those manually, depending on the map, depending on the environment, and a few other factors. So the very first thing that we need to do is we need to set the scale. Notice that Hamina says, that it's got the, the light, light over here to say, hey, you need to set the scale. It also says that down here, and even if we try to turn on a heat map, it'll tell us, hey, you don't have a scale yet. You really need to do that. Fortunately, this project has a scale built in. So I'm gonna click on the scale tool really quick here, and I'm just going to left click on one side and then left click on the other, and then we get this little pop-up where we can type in the scale. Now notice the scale on this map is actually in meters, and we have Hamina set to feet right now. Fortunately, that's really, really easy to change. We just click on feet and we can switch it over to meters. And the same is true for DBM and milliwatts. Anywhere that you see those, you can click on them and that'll bring you into the account management page here and you can just switch back and forth whenever you want. So there we go. Now we've got meters. We'll type in 10, oh, that's 19. We'll type in 10 and then hit set. And there we go. Now we have the, uh, the scale set. And maybe a couple other things that are really good for you to know. Uh, right now I'm using the trackpad on my Mac to, uh, to zoom in and out. So that's one way you can do that. Another thing that you can do is if you hold down the command key on Mac OS or the control key on Windows, then you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse. In this case, I'm using a magic mouse which the, with the touch sensitive top. And that'll, that'll turn your mouse into a zooming tool so you can zoom in and out. You can also click the buttons up here if you want. And then uh, there's also several different ways to pan around the map. So of course you can do two finger scroll on a trackpad, so that's what I'm doing here. That works great on both Windows and Mac. Uh, the other thing you can do too is you can right click and drag with your mouse. That's another way to do it, although I personally don't do that because it interferes with drawing walls, and so I don't typically use the right click and drag to, uh, uh, to pan. But then my favorite way, my absolute favorite way if you don't have a trackpad, is just to hold down the space bar and move your mouse, and that turns the, uh, the mouse into a panning tool while you hold the space bar down. So that works great. Awesome, so now that we've got uh, kind of the basics of how to move around the map in, let, let's uh, let's talk about uh, getting some walls on this floor plan. Now this happens to be a PDF uh, that I have imported, and if the PDF has vector graphics, uh, not bitmap graphics, but vector graphics with separate layers, Hamina can actually draw the walls in for you automatically. And that's also true with CAD files, whether it's a DWG or a DXF, we can draw those in as well. So let's go do that really quick. So I'm gonna come down here to the draw walls tool and I'm gonna click on import walls with CAD or PDF. And then Hamina is gonna find all of the different layers of the CAD file and, or in this case, PDF. And there's two ways that you can select layers. You can either just click on them. Like here, we can click on this structural wall and then we can say, oh, that's a brick wall. There we go. Now we've selected brick wall for that one. You can also just mouse over the different layers. So see here, I've actually moused over this, this wall layer. So I'm gonna click on that. And that took me to this one called Hatch. To be honest, that's not the one that I'm looking for. So let's try again and see if we can get it. There we go. Non-structural wall, that's what I wanted. And I'm gonna give that a heavy drywall presets. There we go. And then finally, there's a window uh, 
profile here too and actually see those down here so let's click on that and that's going to highlight all this stuff all over the place there's windows all over this design and so we'll say exterior window for that and now we can import that and Hamin is going to go through and draw all those walls in for us automatically. So you'll find uh, you'll find that some files will support this. Um, many of the PDFs that I've looked at do have vector graphics, and so they do work for this. Uh, and it also depends on whether they're all separated down to separate layers or not. So it just kind of it's kind of hit and miss. It depends on the source file that we're given. So just be aware of that as you're you're thinking about that. So let's see how it did to uh, to to take a look at what walls we have. I'm going to open the draw walls tool. And now we can just go zoom in on something in the map. And yeah, I mean, I see drywall over, all over the place. That looks pretty good. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm fairly happy with that. But let's talk about how to do this manually, how to manually draw walls. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to a different project really quick. I've got another one here called Hospital. So we'll click on that one. And I've actually gone in ahead of time and I've already set the scale on this. And I've already manually drawn most of the walls. Uh, I just left this little section up here undone. So we'll we'll knock that one out really quick. Let's go take care of these walls. So I'm going to click on the draw walls tool. And uh, then we can select the material that we want to start drawing. And I'm going to start with this brick wall up here. So then to start drawing a wall, basically you left click to begin drawing a wall. So that's just a click, not a drag. So I just clicked once and now I'm just moving my mouse around. And then we'll click again to place a wall segment. And then we'll click again to place another wall segment and click again to place another wall segment. And then when we're done, we right click to stop. And so it's left click, left click, left click, right click to stop. Additionally, there are keyboard shortcuts for all of the wall profiles in Hamina. And you could edit all these, you can change the, the names, you, you could change the uh, the colors, you, you could change like pretty much everything here if you want. You can just hit add or modify and you can go through and change all that stuff. But uh, but I'm just going to stick with the defaults for now. So I'm actually going to hit the H key. So watch this. I'm just going to press H. There we go. We just switched to the drywall preset. And now I can start drawing with the with the heavy drywall. So we'll do left click, kind of pan up a little bit, left click, left click, left click, and right click to stop. So let's do another one here. So notice too that also Hamina likes to snap to other walls. So I've already drawn some of these walls in here. So see like this corner up here, we can actually snap to that corner. So that way we get really, really nice and perfect lines every single time. Let's switch over to brick, left click, left click, left click, right click to stop. And you see how just everything lines up perfectly because of that snapping feature. I love it. It makes it so easy to draw these in. So let's go back to drywall, left click, left click, right click to stop, left click, left click, right click to stop, left click, left click, right click to stop. You get the idea. And for this little corner right here, I'm actually going to zoom in nice and close. Sometimes I'll, to get those really fine details to, to place the wall exactly where I want it, I'll get nice and close with the zooming tool just to make that really, really accurate. So there we go. Things are looking pretty good here. Cool. I like that. Now we need to take care of these windows right here. So I'm actually going to use the keyboard shortcuts to help with that. So I'm going to hit, uh, I'm, I'm actually going to delete this, this wall segment really quick because I didn't make it quite long enough. So we'll just select that, the delete key. And there we go. We'll go back to the, the wall drawing tool. B for brick left click, left click, and now I need to switch to window while I'm drawing. We can do that on the fly. I'm gonna hit the Q key, and there we go. And then B to go back to brick, and then Q to go back to that exterior window, and then B to go back to brick, and there we go. See how easy that is? It just, it doesn't get any easier than that. So we'll do some brick here. We'll do uh, a window there, back to brick. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now we don't have every single wall. There, there's like a few down here I haven't done and a few up here, but it's okay. That's totally fine for what we need to do today. Awesome. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to mark some uh, exclusion or out of scope zones to tell Hamina where we do and don't care about, uh, about Wi-Fi. One place on this design, I'm probably not going to bother uh, bother with uh, with Wi-Fi is in the stairwell. Actually, I've already got an area drawn in for that, so we need to delete that really quick. So for the sake of the demo, we need to delete that. So let's do that really fast. I'm going to show you how to select items in here uh, to to delete them or move them around or whatever we need to do. So uh, that not exactly what I planned, but I just forgot to take that out of there. But that's okay. We'll totally roll with it. So what I'm going to do is I have the edit tool selected here. I'm just gonna click and drag to select all this stuff right here. And notice that we get these little bubbles up here that tell us uh, what we have selected. We can click on these to, uh, to only select a subset of what we have already selected. So I wanna select these out of scope zones. So I'm just gonna click on those. Now notice that only those are, are highlighted now and I can hit the delete key and now only those have been removed but all the walls get to stay. So let's go ahead and re-add our out of scope zones. 
So I'm gonna actually hide the walls really quick. I just wanna get those out of the way so that I can see the map more clearly. Oh, and it looks like I have an in-scope zone around the whole thing, so we'll remove that as well. So that way we just don't have anything here. So now we're kind of starting from scratch on this so I can show you how to use it. So we'll click on the out-of-scope zone, and I'm gonna zoom in nice and close on this stairwell so we can be really accurate. And I'm just gonna draw a shape around this, a lot like we draw walls. I'm gonna go left click, uh, left click, left click, left click, left click, left click, and then finally we right click to stop. So there we go, we've now drawn a uh, an out of scope zone. I also wanna take, there's a, jan a janitor closet or a storage room down here. Let's get that one out as well. So I'm just gonna click and drag a square. So this is just a square. We'll just click, drag, release the mouse, and there we go. Now we've just drawn a square. It's super, super easy. Now, if you wanna do an inclusion zone around the whole thing, like let's just drop an AP in here really quick. Uh, I have a Cisco 9120 selected right now, so we'll just drop that in there. And we'll turn on a visualization really fast. Notice that we don't draw any kind of coverage in those uh, out of scope zones. Those basically get ignored and we just don't draw any signal in those. I mean, there is some signal strength that's getting into this area, even though it's lined with concrete, it's still gonna get in there, uh, but we're just not visualizing anything there. You can also do an include zone around the whole thing so that you don't show coverage flying out into the parking lot or outside of the building. Now, normally I'd, I'd follow around the building very, very closely. I'd just do the left click, left click thing all the way around. But in this case, I'm just gonna do a square. We're just gonna draw a square really quick, and there we go. Now you can see that we're only drawing the coverage that's actually you know, close to being inside the building. But I'm actually gonna take that out because it looks really cool without it, and I kinda want you to see how cool it looks, you know, sales and demos and all that. You know how it goes, I have to make it look really cool. Awesome, okay, so let's talk about placing access points now. Now I already placed that one, so I just selected it and, and deleted it. I am gonna bring my walls back though, I've got a few other views disabled here. Ah, I forgot to take the PoE clients out too after the last demo. That's okay. You're just gonna get to see how to do bulk select and remove here. So we're gonna do the same thing for all those PoE clients. Just pretend that they weren't there. They're, they're not there. So we'll click on client devices, hit the delete key. There we go, now they're all gone. Cool, we have everything shown. Um, and then for the heat map, I have selected, in this little menu up here, I've selected Wi-Fi coverage in five gigahertz. That's the first thing we're gonna look at. So let's go, let's go select a, uh, an access point model. So I'm gonna click on access points here and you can choose between Wi-Fi, uh, private cellular or BLE devices here. You can pick which technology you wanna use. And uh, we already let the, the Cisco 9120 have a little bit of airtime. So I think now let's switch over to a Juniper. Let's go with an AP43. Yeah, we'll do the AP45. Yeah, cause it's got six gigahertz. So. Yeah, sorry Cisco, you had your time in the limelight. Now we'll switch over to Juniper for a little bit. Maybe we'll jump back to Cisco here again in just a little bit. And uh, I wish I could show all the vendors, but we got a lot of different vendors in here. Um, and I there's, there's APs from all these vendors that I just absolutely love. And uh, we'd love to show you all of them, but we'll just stick with a few vendors for the sake of demoing today. But you know, there's a good chance that whatever whatever access point you're looking for, whether it's from Meraki, or if you're going with something from Ingenious, or if you're using uh, if you're using Ubiquity, there's a good chance that whatever access point you need to do your network design with, a really good chance we've got it in here. And if we don't, let us know. If it's a relatively modern access point and if we can get the antenna plots from the manufacturer, then we're happy to put it in there for you. So just just shoot us a, shoot us an email at support at homina.com and we'll check that out for you. So let's place our, our Juniper AP45. So um, we've got our mount height is 2.5 meters. Let's switch it back to feet. I'm a little bit more familiar with feet, so forgive me for that, but we'll go with feet for now. So it's right up on the ceiling at 8.2 feet. So let's start placing some APs. So we'll just go around and start dropping some access points in here. And one thing that you might notice is that when we drop an AP in here or make any changes to the predictive model, it looks really blocky and fuzzy at first, but then it starts to sharpen up and it gets sharper and sharper and sharper if we give it just a couple minutes to do that. You even get a little progress bar up here to show you how uh, how that's coming along and how Hamina is doing for doing all its computation. So what we do is we start out with a really fuzzy image. So that way, like if you wanna nudge an AP around, it updates really fast and super, super silky smooth. And then, uh, and then when you stop moving things around, it just gets sharper and sharper and sharper. And my favorite thing about this is that Hamina never makes you wait. You can always interrupt any calculations that it's doing. That stuff always happens in the background and it prioritizes you, the user, and lets you keep clicking on stuff and working and moving on stuff. It just doesn't slow you down. I love that so, so much. 
So there we go. We've placed uh, a handful of access points. It looks like we've got 13 APs that are placed around the map here. And also you may notice that Hamina has automatically done a channel plan. So you can see like this radio up here, we've got uh, the 2.4 gigahertz radio on channel 11, the five gigahertz radio on channel 149 and the six gigahertz radio on channel 33. Oh yeah, you heard that right. Of course we've support six gigahertz. You gotta, I mean, it's the future. We're, we're just about there. Like six gigahertz is, is basically here depending on where you are in the world. So then uh, what we can do is we can actually view that, uh, that channel plan and see how, if there's any interference. And so let's do that right now. So I'm gonna click on the heat maps up here and I'm gonna go look at the interference visualization and we're gonna look at it in 2.4 because it's gonna be a mess down in 2.4 cause we only have three channels to work with. So. So here we go, here's our interference visualization. This specifically is showing us co-channel interference. It, it's showing us uh, any anywhere that we can hear more than than uh, two, either two or more access points that are having to uh, share a channel, which is gonna cause contention and slow things down. We wanna avoid co-channel interference as much as possible. So anywhere that's yellow, means that there's two APs that can be heard above a certain signal strength in that spot on the same channel. In fact, you can look down here at the um, at the legend and it's got a little inspector. So like as we move our mouse around, you can see here, it's uh, we've got two APs that are sharing a channel here in all these places that are yellow. And anywhere that's red means that there are three or more access points sharing the same channel. And that's bad. We wanna avoid that at all costs. Now in 2.4, that's gonna be really tough. Um, one thing that Hamina will do is it will shut off radios to try to avoid that. So you can see actually this access point right here, you can see the 2.4 gigahertz radio has automatically been turned off. So uh, so it'll try to try to minimize co-channel interference in 2.4 by turning off some of the radios, which is a really good strategy for uh, reducing co-channel interference in 2.4. But let's go back and take a look at five gigahertz really quick. And there's actually a little bit of interference here. We actually have just a few little spots where we have a little bit of co-channel interference from adjacent, uh, you know, other other uh, other access points. Access points are are stepping on each other just a little bit on this map. Uh, in fact, it looks like it is channel 165. That's the channel that, uh, that, that we're running into some trouble with. So we can actually fix this by adjusting the channel plan. So let's do that. I'm actually just gonna click on an AP really quick and that opens up the settings for this access point over here. And I'm gonna click on the show more expando down here to show some more options. You can set the transmit power. You can uh, you can set uh, which switch it's connected to. I'll talk about that in a little while. We even have how much power, how much PoE power this access point needs plugged in here as well. It's provided direct by the vendor. But what we're really interested in right now is the auto channel assignments, which is currently turned on. So I'm gonna click on this link to open up our channel assignments. And you can see that I've actually gone through and taken a bunch of channels out of our potential channel plan. So we've got one, six and 11 and 2.4, five or six gigahertz. We've got everything turned on 80 megahertz channels there because you know, six gigahertz is just massive. There's so much spectrum to work with. I love it. But here in, in the five gigahertz band, I've actually taken some channels out. I've knocked out all of uni two E and, uh, and, and uh, all of uni two, but I've left all of uni one and uni three in there. So let's actually give it a few more channels. So I'm going to add a few channels back and then we'll scroll down here and hit save and Hamina will automatically redo the channel plan. And look at that. Uh, now we have no co-channel interference because we uh, we added a couple more, we added four more channels to our channel plan. So that gives us more room to breathe. And so now we have just absolutely no co-channel interference at all. So that's how you can adjust the channel plans in, in Hamina. Cool, let's, uh, let's next take a look at what we can do from a network equipment side of things. Let's think about the wired side of the network a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the network equipment tool and uh, I'm gonna select infrastructure up here. And from here, we can add an IDF, uh, which I think stands for intermediate distribution frame. Think like a switch closet, something like that. And then there's the MDF, which I think is main distribution frame, I think. Uh, double check me on that. I, I don't remember for sure, but this is like basically where your D mark is. Or you can do an individual switch or a router. So let's do individual switches. So I'm gonna say, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna select switch here. And we're gonna say that this switch has 24 ports. And let's say that it's just kind of a weak access point. It doesn't have a lot of, of capacity. So it's only a 200 watt switch. 
and we'll place one down here in this closet. So now you can see all these lines that show us where all the access points are connected. In fact, we can place another switch up here. So now we have two switches and you can see the cables, uh, you know, how, how each, each AP is connected to the wired infrastructure. But this, uh, this switch up here definitely has a problem. Notice that it's red. If we click on it, we're actually about 20 watts short of a Happy Meal here. We actually don't have enough wattage from this switch to support those access points. And that's gonna be a problem. So maybe we should fix that. So to do it, I've got this one selected right now. Let's convert it from a switch to an IDF. And we'll say, okay, instead of one wimpy switch, let's do two wimpy switches. So we'll say uh, that we have two switches, 24 ports each, but still just 200 watts each. So there we go. Now we have 400 watts available and that switch is nice and happy and there's enough power over ethernet to go around. So then what about other PoE devices on the network? We've got all the APs in here, but what about like desk phones and things like that? You can add those too. If we go to the client device tab, we can select from a number of different types of devices. Like for example, we could do desk phones and uh, we could start placing those on the map and they also get added to our switch. So we'll just go through and place a few desk phones and let's see, it looks like, uh, Looks like maybe a few desk phones that go in here. I, these don't all say offices. I could probably go find ones that say offices, but that's okay. It'll be fine. So there's a bunch of phones. Let's do uh, let's do some card readers as well. So maybe we have like a secure access building here, maybe a few secure doorways. And look at that. We've actually just overwhelmed this switch. So what if we wanted to take this particular card reader and push it back to this first IDF? You can do that. Uh, so I'm, I'm gonna grab the edit tool and just click on it. So now we have it selected and I'm gonna go to the connected via ethernet box and I'm just gonna push that to IDF5. You can actually see it kind of light up there if we hover our mouse over it. So there's IDF5 and there we go. Now it's it's over there and we still have enough capacity. <laughs> we have a whole 1.4 watts left on that switch. Uh, yeah, I'm sure that'll be fine. That, that's not gonna cause problems. Yeah, you probably don't wanna cut it that close with your PoE budgets, but I think you get the idea. Cool, so now you can see we've got a whole bunch of PoE devices here. So from that, we can generate a power and cabling details report. So this report will show us how we're doing from uh, how many APs are connected to each switch, how many wired clients, how many ports are consumed and how much PoE we're using, as well as our total cable length. So you can get an idea of how much cabling you're gonna need to run inside the, the building to complete the project. And uh, of course you can include that in the reporting system, which I'll show you a little bit later on. Okay, so this map is starting to look a little bit crazy. So I'm gonna clean things up a little bit by going up here to the show menu and let's hide all of the PoE clients and the cables and also the numbers for the switching devices and let's get rid of the channels and the numbers for the access points as well. And we'll also get rid of the walls. And so, yeah, well, let's get rid of the out of scope zones as well. So there we go. Nice clean map again. You can hide and show things whenever you want depending on, on what you want to view uh, on the map. Cool, okay, let's move on to the next thing, which is an awesome feature called the client view. I love this feature, it's super, super exciting. Basically, what we've done is we have modeled the band preferences and roaming behaviors and capabilities of a number of common client devices in Hamina. Uh, for example, for the iPhone, we just went and looked at Apple's design recommendations to understand where the roaming thresholds are for the iPhone. And for the Android devices, we actually peeled open the, open, the Android open source project and looked at that to see how do Android devices decide to, to, to roam. And in some other cases, we've gotten data directly from the client vendors to, dis, to determine how they're going to roam. So let's grab the iPhone really quick. Actually, no, let's do an Android phone without Wi-Fi 6E. So and I'm also gonna check this show association area box. I like that because it, when we start clicking and dragging to move the client around, it'll show us where we think the client is gonna stay associated to the access point. So you can see the, the current signal strength, we're hanging out at about negative 45 dBm here at about uh, 575 megabits per second. You can also see the phi type and the MCS down there as well as how many spatial streams there are and uh, what the channel width is. And then if we start to go around the corner here, notice that we roam from one access point to another and we can see uh, at what threshold it decided to roam. So there's neg 69 dBm and then boom, it just roamed over to the next access point because it's at neg 55 dBm. Let's zoom in a little bit here. We'll get a little bit closer. Whoops, we teleported to the middle here because I clicked out there. So what I love using this tool for is I love using this to help 
to help uh, customers, you know, people that are uh, customers of somebody who wants to get a network installed and, and uh, you know, maybe isn't a Wi-Fi design expert, this is a fantastic way to help them understand why we design networks the way we do. Like, for example, you could use this to show a customer why we really don't want to put the AEPs up and down the hallways and how that's going to have such a negative impact on the performance of the network. This is also just a great way just to validate, like, oh, okay, how are things going to work? How do we think things are going to work on this network based on where all of my access points are located? So I think it's a pretty exciting, uh, a pretty exciting uh, innovation, Hamina, and uh, yeah, check it out. Hopefully, you get a chance to play with it, move your client around, select different client devices, and see how they roam. You know, we're never going to perfectly, we're never going to make this like perfectly accurate with the real world because there's just so much that goes into a client device making a roaming decision, but I really do think this is fantastic for helping people understand why we design networks the way that we do, and plus, it's just really fun to mess with, so go give it a shot. Cool. Okay. So with that, let's go take a look at another design. So we kind of done like uh, it's sort of our ca our carpeted space kind of design. I guess it's a, it's a hospital, so it's not really going to have a lot of carpet. But you know, this is kind of your typical design. Uh, let's go take a look at something that's a little bit more three dimensional, and let's go uh, do a design for a uh, for a warehouse. So I'm just going to call it warehouse. Super creative, I know. And then we'll go select warehouse from the list and hit save. And here we go. Now we have a new project ready. And I'm just going to grab my warehouse image and I'm going to drag and drop it into the into the floor plan here. So there we go. We'll, we'll let that load in really quickly. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to set the scale for this. And I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm going to do something that you should never, ever, ever do. And I'm going to use a doorway to set the scale. Uh, now, the the reason why I can't scale this is uh, I actually don't uh, actually don't know this where this building is in the real world. I don't even know if it really exists. If I could, I would probably go to Google Earth and measure it on Google Earth, like maybe the, from one side to the other, and use that to set the scale. If the longer the the longer the wall, the, the you know the longer length of the building, something like that. Those are always really really good ways to set the scale. It's going to give you a nice accurate scale. The problem with doing it with a doorway like I'm going to do here, so if we go click here, click here, and then say that's three feet, the problem is is that being a few inches off on a really short scale like that, when you scale that up to the entire size of a warehouse, your scale might be really inaccurate. It's easy to be inaccurate when you try to scale with something small. Always, always use a long wall, a hallway, the length of the building, something like that. Use Google Earth, grab yourself like a nice Bosch laser range finder or something like that. Those are really handy to have in the toolkit. All right, awesome. So now let's go ahead and draw our walls. So I'm gonna go grab concrete really quick and we're just gonna go really fast around the edges here. I'm not gonna really take my time with this because you know we're just doing a demo and you don't need to see like see me do like a pixel perfect design here. So there we go, there's our exterior done. Let's do some drywall now. So I'm gonna hit H to switch to the heavy drywall and uh, we'll click and drag and then right click to stop. We'll do that wall. We'll get this wall in here. And by the way, if you're worried about kind of like the work that, in, that is involved in drawing walls, I, I kind of like it actually. This is a really, really nice way to burn some time on like a Friday afternoon when you're tired of answering emails and solving problems. In fact, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. It's a Friday afternoon for me. And so I'm just knocking out a video, drawing in some walls. I'm gonna zoom in nice and close to this little separator wall there. There we go. Great, so we've got the office area drawn in. Let's go do this uh, this lounge over here. It's probably just drywall around that. Awesome, there we go, cool. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we need to model these shelves. Now, a wall isn't a good choice for this because walls don't have any width assigned to them. They're just like a wall. We need something that we can, we can make as wide as the shelves really are. And the right tool for the job there is going to be an attenuating object. Uh, so these work a little bit differently than walls. When we simulate RF passing through a wall, like let's say that you have like a like a heavy drywall, when the RF passes through the wall, we just knock it down by four dB. So I say just as if it's easy, you know, there's a lot more to it than that. But as the RF travels through the wall, it gets knocked down by four dB and then it exits the far side of the wall. Attenuating objects work a little bit differently. Uh, the RF gets attenuated 
per meter that it passes through the wall. So that means that as it goes through the wall at different angles, it's going to attenuate it in, uh, it's going to attenuate it differently depending on what angle it goes to the wall and or wall, depending on how, how, uh, what angle it, it travels through the attenuating object and how long it has to travel through that attenuating object. So we say that it's attenuation per meter in here instead of just a straight attenuation value. Cool. So let's grab our warehouse shelf. And uh, remember, we could draw whatever shape we want. I showed you how to do that with the out of scope zones. But since these are just squares, we're just going to click, drag, release the mouse button. And we get the snap tool there. Click, drag, release the mouse button. And we can draw the draw the uh, the warehouse shelving in there really, really quick. So there we go. Cool. Those look good. Now, this, this uh, default profile in here is about 25 feet. In fact, let's change it. Let's say it's exactly 25 feet. So there we go. Now, it's uh, it, it's a nice round number if you're working in feet. Now, if you're working in meters, we just messed it up. But I actually want to create another one uh, that is a shorter version of this same shelf. So I'm going to hit the duplicate button and I'm going to get rid of the shortcut key. I'm not going to worry about finding a new key right now. And I'm going to rename this to shelf warehouse short. Oops, I can't quite type. There we go. And I'm going to say that it's only 10 feet tall and I'm going to change the color to green. So that way it's kind of different from our, our other shelf profile, which is gray. So there we go. Now we have our warehouse shelf and our short warehouse shelf. So we'll hit save. And uh, now we have this new one available. So now we'll just make these into shelves. So we'll click and drag on those. I'll put one in right here. Whoops. The map moved a little bit. So I'll grab the edit tool, delete that, go back to the attenuating object tool. Yeah, there we go. That looks much better place this one here. I don't know if these are shelves, but we're going to pretend that they're shelves. We're just going to say that they're shelves. And yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm going to move it a little bit, kind of center it there. Nice. I like that. Awesome. So now we have modeled our entire warehouse. The warehouse is ready to go. You could draw the trucks in too, if you wanted to. That, that's totally something you can do if you're worried about coverage out here in the yard or anything like that. So great. So uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and start doing a design in here. Now, since these shelves are 25 feet high, I'm going to say this warehouse is probably 35 feet up to this or 30 feet rather up to the ceiling. So let's go grab our access points again. And I'm going to go uh, over to the uh, the Wi-Fi APs here. And uh, let's do Aruba this time. So we did Cisco, we did Mist, we'll do Aruba now. And uh, I'm, I'm not quite as familiar with Aruba, so we'll see. I might fumble around a little bit. But I think if we go with the 514, that's got external antenna connectors on it. So notice that with an AP with internal antennas, then you just place the AP. But if you have external antenna connectors, you can choose from a bunch of different uh, antenna vendors. So there's Ventev, Exceltex, Fortinet, Netgear. We've got a whole bunch of different types and vendors of, of antennas in here that you can choose from. But I'm gonna go with Exceltex. And uh, let's just place an AP here first. So there we go. There's an AP it's placed. Let's turn on coverage for five gigahertz. And that looks like an external omnidirectional antenna to me. It looks like it goes pretty much evenly in every direction. So let's find something that has a directional antenna. So these look like high density patch antennas. So we'll go with uh, with this one right here. That, that might be a good choice. And now notice that we get this little arrow and we can point it around to say which direction we want that antenna to face. So we go, see like, for example, if we put it on the wall all the way over here, it goes right across the warehouse, no problem. But we also need to change the height. Remember the ceiling in here is uh, is about 30 feet. So let's uh, change the height to 30, hit enter. And there we go. Notice that the little, there's a little pin here. It's got like a little pin here to say where the access point is located, which is right here at the tip of the pin, right away, by the way. Notice that that gets longer if it's higher up. So you can tell the difference between say, well, let's go place one. Let's go do, uh, I'm gonna go place another access point here. Let's do a 515 in the office. And we're gonna say that one's just 8.2 feet because it's in the office, it's gonna have a lower ceiling. But you can see the difference in the length of the pin here this AP that's out here in the uh, out here in the warehouse has a longer tail. So let's point it down the aisle there. And uh, yeah, so we've got it 30 feet up, but it's also pointing out at 90 degrees right now. Like there's no down tilt for this. So let's give it some down tilt so we can kind of cover the ground a little bit better underneath it. So I'm going to give it 30 degrees of down tilt. So we type in 30. Note that that arrow points down to help help uh, help you uh, verify that yes, it is pointing down like you'd want it to. 
and we'll stick that one here in the corner. And then let's just place some more APs. So I'll just click away from that access point and notice that it keeps, it says add access point now, and it keeps all of our settings, our down tilt, our height, all that. So let's just place one here and then we'll do one here. That looks pretty good. And then let's do one out here as well. So I'll click out here and then we'll point this one where we want it. So we'll put it like that. And then we'll point this one here and maybe I'll point it up there like that. Now, if you get a chance, one thing that's really fun in an environment like this is just to go grab an access point and just start moving it around and looking at all the little shadows and things that form. It's really, really fun to do that. So go check it out, go, go play with that. And it's just, it's fun. Yeah. Give it a shot sometime. So I, I really enjoy that. It's fun to play with that and see, see kind of how it looks. So there we go. We now have a five gigahertz uh, uh, design in this warehouse with external antennas. Nice. I think that looks pretty good. And of course you can do things like, you know, grab the client view and see how things are going to roam. When are we going to roam from one AP to another? Do we see it like hit any really, really horrible, slow, terrible data rates before it decides to roam? Now things look pretty healthy here. I like that. I think it's, uh, I think it looks pretty good. And uh, looks like we're getting a good NEG64 DBM in the bathroom. Important stuff. So I like it. Great. So now let's go take a look at one last uh, example for a design. And then we'll hop back over to the hospital and kind of wrap things up by talking about reporting. So I'm going to switch over to an outdoor design. This is actually Hamina, the city of Hamina in Finland. And uh, what I've done here is I've actually just uh, grabbed a screenshot from Apple Maps. Apple Maps happened to have the best imagery of the city of Hamina. You can probably see our, our company logo kind of hidden there in the, in the design of the streets. So I, uh, I brought in the image and then I scaled it. And then I simply drew attenuating objects here to uh, mark where all the buildings are. So maybe we could find a building that I haven't done yet. Like, yeah, here's, here's one right here. That looks like a two-story building. So I'll grab this two-floor one here, do left click, left click, left click, left click, left click, left click, and then right click to stop. And then this one, this one's going to be super easy. That actually looks like one floor to me. So we'll just go click and drag, and there we go. Now we've created that one. So this whole downtown area, this is like 10, maybe 15 minutes worth of work. Not a big deal to draw this in. I don't have every single building in here, but I've got a lot of the ones, especially towards the center done. So we've got uh, we, we've got enough here to do an outdoor design with this. So let's do uh, some private cellular out here. So I'm gonna go back to the access point view, and this time I've got 4G, 5G selected. And I'm going to go with an air span. We're going to do the 131090 because it has a directional antenna built in. So we'll place that here kind of in the center of town. And then we're also going to switch our heat map over to 4G, 5G with the max RSRP. If you're familiar with Wi-Fi primarily, that's basically RSSI, except we call it RSRP over in the, uh, in the, in the cellular world. So now we can change which way that antenna is pointing. So we could point it like down this street, for example. We can move it around. You can definitely see how that's a very, very directional antenna. Coverage is definitely suffering at 8.2 feet. So let's bring it way up in the air. Let's say like 40 feet. So we're gonna put it on a nice tall mast here, get it nice up and up and high here. And you can move that around and figure out exactly where you wanna put that. And you can see how we could cover, maybe we go a little bit higher. Let's see what we can do here. Go a little bit higher. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So you can see how we can uh, we, we can get some coverage with this thing pretty quickly with really just like a couple of these. Maybe we'll put another one out here and uh, point it the, the opposite direction. So you can do uh, Wi-Fi and CBRS planning at the same time in Hamina. Same tool, same everything. I mean, it from a Hamina perspective, it's pretty much the same point and click process to place, uh, to place your E node Bs and E node Gs here. And to and it looks just like placing Wi-Fi APs, really. So obviously there's different design considerations, but that's what it looks like to do an outdoor design. And of course you can do indoor private cellular as well. Great, so that's what it looks like to do, uh, just a little taste at least of how to do an outdoor design. But let's switch back over to our hospital really quick and let's finish things up by looking at the reporting system in Hamina. So I'm gonna bring back all of our, uh, all of our map attributes really quick here, all of our stuff on our map just to kind of remind you what we've done. So we did our APs, we did walls, attenuation areas, anything like that. We, we got all that done. Oh, one thing we should do, let's do something with an external antenna out here in the courtyard. Maybe we don't actually need it, but we'll just pretend that we do. So I'm gonna do an AP45E out here. So there we go. 
Let's look at uh, our, our coverage in the five gigahertz band. We'll just click on that AP, so we're just visualizing that. And we'll do another one of those, uh, we'll do another one of those high density patches. So here we go, there's a six lead high density patch. Got it pointed out there. Let's do a, it's on a pole mount, so that's good. Let's put it like 20 feet high. Let's give it like 15 degrees of down tilt just a little bit. Yeah, that looks good. I like that. Now, additionally, I wanna mark some APs that I, I think are going to use a slightly different mount than the other APs. And so to do that, I'm gonna hold down the shift key. Let's just grab like three APs, maybe four APs that are up here in this corner. Oh, that's the caps lock key. That doesn't do anything. We'll do shift. There we go. Much better. So yeah, there we go. We've got a few APs selected and uh, I'm gonna change the color of these APs to red. So we're just gonna switch them to a different color. That's gonna cause the mounts to show up as a different line item in the bill of materials. Nice little trick to kind of separate things out. And oh, look at this switch. Oh yeah, this switch. Now we're way under budget. Okay, let's just bite the bullet. Let's do two switches, a little bit better. There we go, much better. So now, now we're all happy there. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Um, oh, maybe we should do BLE coverage really quick. Oh, we gotta do BLE. So let's design for secondary coverage. So this shows us this uh, with secondary coverage here. Let's go take a look and see what the default is. We want to see at least two beacons above negative 65 dBm. Yeah, there we go. So let's uh, we're going to need to place some more beacons to kind of get this whole thing uh, all good to go. So let's hide our network equipment and our walls really quick just to kind of clean things up. Ah, uh, yeah, much better. Now we can actually see what we're doing. So we'll go back to access points and we'll go to BLE. And I'm just going to do use this generic BLE beacon profile here. And I, I know that with Mist, uh, they recommend if you want to do like room to room location services, they recommend one beacon in every room. So uh, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but we'll we'll just kind of loosely follow that guideline. So you see now I'm just going through and, uh, and and placing a few more beacons in there. Let's give it just a second to catch up here. I'm asking it to do a lot. Oh yeah, look at how much better the secondary coverage is already, just by even hitting like every other room. It's probably not going to give us perfect room to room accuracy, but it'll get us pretty close. And yeah, I think that looks pretty good. I like that. So now we've got a bunch of BLE beacons everywhere. And if I remember correctly, these, I think, do they pull? Okay, so these are actually not connected via Ethernet. But what you can do, let's actually select all of them and say that yes, those are connected via Ethernet back. And so we'll select all of our um, we'll select all of our APs here, and we could actually say nearest device, and now it's going to route everything back. In fact, I'm not even totally sure it's going to work. Let's take a look really quick. Oh yeah, yep, all of our BLE devices are now all connected back to a switch. So yeah, <laughs> the cabling requirements just went up significantly with all of these uh, cable connected BLE beacons. Of course, you could use battery powered ones. That, that just would not be a problem. Hamina can handle that effortlessly. So cool. Yeah, now we have a Bluetooth design here as well. So you know what? Let's just go all the way. Let's just do it and do a uh, cellular in here as well. How about we go grab like a Salona and pop a couple Salonas in here? And, uh, oh, that's right. We don't have Salona in there quite yet, but we will, we will really, really soon. So let's do, uh, let's do a couple more of those air spans. We'll just do the air span 1000s really quick. So there we go. There's one. We'll put one over here. There's two and there's three and there's four enode bees to cover the whole thing. So awesome. Look at that. We have like every technology here, everything. Like we're, we're not missing any main, like any main uh, uh, mobile mobility technology here. So I like this. This looks really great. So now let's talk about how you can uh, both share this project and, uh, and how you can make a report out of it. Now, the first thing you can do is you could go up here to this share button and you can share this with other users. Like we could say like you see at hamina.com and hit invite. And there we go. Now you see is going to receive an email and he can open up this, uh, this design. He can make edits to it. He can change stuff. He can do whatever he wants. Now here's the kicker. If I share this with an unlicensed Hamina user, they will be able to view all of the work that I've done. They'll be able to add notes, add maps, and I think they can also do out of scope zones if I remember correctly, but they can't make any changes to the design. Uh, so basically your sales guy doesn't have to have a, he, uh, he doesn't have to have a license to Hamina to check out the project and continue to add notes and things like that. Only the people that are doing the design 
have to have a paid license for Hamina to do that. But in UC's case, he has a paid license, you know, he kind of being the founder and CEO or whatever, whatever that means. Uh, he'll be able to make full edits to this. And so we could collaborate on this design. Okay, so that's the sharing side of things, but we can also create a report. So first off, we've got the bill of materials here that's automatically generated. So here are all the different things that are gonna, there are all the pieces of hardware and things that are gonna have to go into this design. You can edit all of this. I mean, we could say like, you see, I've edited this already to say part number. We could add this one to say cost. And, uh, and then you could go through and add specific costs in here to say like, oh yeah, you know, these are like, I don't know what, I have no idea what these cost, but I'm gonna say it's like $40 for that ceiling mount or whatever. So there's a lot of flexibility here for how you can, uh, how you, you can, uh, you know, build out your, your bill of materials. And then there's also, uh, the project notes that are there. You can go in here and edit those as well, but let's just go create a new report. So I'm going to hit create new report and we'll give that just a second. And I'm going to call it, uh, a. Wi-Fi. No, 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 no. It's not just Wi-Fi. This is Wi-Fi, uh, BLE, and CBRS all at the same time. So there we go. Nice long report name there. So there's the name of our report. Of course, you can add a logo in here if you'd like. And then you can go through and decide what you want the uh, the whoever's receiving the report to see. So like, for example, we've got coverage here. And see, it's going to load a coverage map here in just a second. And there we go. Yep, there's our coverage map. There's secondary coverage here as well. Maybe we say that we don't want the customer to see tertiary coverage. Maybe we say we're not going to worry about secondary RSRP or tertiary. And uh, maybe for BLE, we're only worried about secondary. We're actually not even going to show them coverage. We're just going to show them secondary coverage and so on and so forth. So we can hide all those. Of course, you can also change all of the titles and things. So like the bill of materials, you can say, uh, you know, we could say, call this the stuff and you could change the description, the things that we need to make the network. And that's all going to get included in the, in the report. You can see even the title changed right there. And then from here, you can go click the share button and you can give it a password if you want and hit create a link. And now we have created a link that you can share with your end user. And now they basically get to see what this looks like. In fact, let's just do that really quick. So I'm going to copy the, uh, I'm going to copy the link really quick and let's open an incognito window here so I can pretend to be somebody else and we'll paste our link to our report and let's go have a look and see what we get. So there we go. Now I can't edit anything. I can't hide or show anything. Let's go take a look at our Wi-Fi coverage. So we can have, select between different floors. If we have multiple floors here, we can switch between bands right here. I didn't put a, a, a description in here, but now we get this fully interactive report, not just a PDF with little like postage stamp screenshots that don't show you any detail for like a 40,000 square foot floor plan. No, this is fully interactive. The user can zoom in all the way they can click on a specific access point if they want to see what the coverage looks like from that AP. They can see all the settings for it, the type of antennas that were used, what the transmit power is supposed to be, where it's supposed to be connected, what the PoE draw is. All of the details are here. Absolutely everything is here. Even like the switch and cabling locations is 100% here. So this gives you like the ultimate combination between a report and a web-based read only mode. And I'm super, super excited about this. I think this has got potential to change the way that we consume Wi-Fi design reports. Cool. I think that about wraps it up. If you have any questions at all, feel free to get in touch with us. There's a contact us form on our website. You can also just email us at support at homina.com. Please feel free to get in touch. We are always happy to help. Thanks for checking out this video and for checking out this uh, demo. Hopefully we'll get a chance to talk to you soon. Bye now.